Hey guys, Omar here. and Want to get ahead in your flash photography? I'd like you to meet a good partner of mine, a good assistant of mine, Rachel Green, I call her. Oh, wait, there's something missing. Oh, damn it. Yeah, that's better. Now, when I first started photography, I used to practice my lighting and my flash technique using a timer on the camera. I'd put it up for like 10 seconds or two seconds, and then I would just photograph myself to see what the light was doing on my face. There's nothing better than a mannequin if you want to really, really get the nuances of what light does, uh, where you could just experiment by yourself and see what happens. She's got a little bit of pattern baldness going there. I know what that's like. But I got the idea of a mannequin from Roberto Valenzuela. He's, he used a mannequin uh, for his daily practice. He's very big on practicing every day. Okay, if you go on Anima... Stop staring at me. Okay, if you go on Amazon, there's a bunch of mannequin heads, but some of them are really creepy, like it's just the head. You know, like if you had a severed head on a stick. I don't like that. They also have ones that are like hyper-realistic. I think people will start talking. And here's how I have her set up. So she comes with this, she's just a head. So she comes a uh, head with this little torso and I sort of drilled a hole into the bottom so that I could put it on a light stand. I have it on a little Manfrotto mini light stand here. And what I do is just put the torso on the light stand and it spins around like crazy. So I have these cool bungee ties with the orange. See how it just, it just goes like crazy. They used to drive me nuts when I first started practicing. With the bungee cord, you could just put it around here and then you pull and put it on one of the little uh, thingies right there and she won't spin around anymore. Another important factor about your mannequin is try to get one that has glossy, realistic eyes. That way you can see, and that's the important thing, is to see what your light or your flash is doing. Okay, let's jump on the computer and we'll show you how I used her when I first got her. That sounds wrong. We're gonna show you how we first used it or when I first got it on the, <laughs> on the computer. Let's just jump to the computer. This is just too weird. Okay, first let me show you a little bit of an example of practicing. So when I first got the mannequin, one of the things that I wanted to figure out was how I could angle my light so it wouldn't hit the background as much. So feathering my light was the practice. And as you can see here, I am sort of using my fireplace in the background. And here you could see the background. Uh, so I'm working with the lighting to see if I feather it. And this is an extremely feathered light. Can I get rid of the background? And I could. Now you could really grid a light or do something where you can flag the light so it doesn't hit the background. But my practice sometimes is uh, based on reality. If I just have one light, can I feather it so that it doesn't hit the background? And I can. And so with the mannequin, instead of using a kid or a person, it works great. Here's another shot showing the setup. So I take a picture of the setup so I can see what it's doing. But uh, this was an example of, um, I wanted a, a, a modifier that I could just use really quickly. And so this is the, I think like a six foot umbrella or seven foot umbrella and I wanted to see what kind of light I could get from it. And this obviously would light up the background, but I knew that I could use it in a bind if I didn't care about the background because it's nice and soft. Uh, so here I remember testing the light bare, like just opening the, the umbrella really quickly and also putting a cover on it. So here I remember I was like, let me put the cover and flag a little bit. And then I could see that I could get this. The whole point is that I wouldn't know these things on the job or just practicing with the person because there's always that, mm, are we done yet? Kind of thing, you know, especially with kids. And my wife, who's super wonderful and patient, um, I don't like to bug her for that long. Here, you can do a bunch of sessions and take notes. Okay, and then I've taken her outside, which is very risky. You will be looked at strangely by your neighbors. Here, I was testing out a natural light with high speed sync and also using an ND filter. I remember, hey, can I get rid of the natural light uh, and shoot with uh, the flash? So here she is, a head on a stick and I put a hat on her. Here it is. So this is with an ND filter and a bare umbrella uh, because I remember testing, hey, will an umbrella look okay? I didn't really like the look I remember of just a bare umbrella. This I used uh, when I was gonna do a Hollywood inspired shoot. I knew that the light had to be sort of harsh and very directional on the person. Okay, here's what the shoot was all about. My client needed posters for their room of their kid. 
Uh, and the theme was kind of like barbecue and hot and fire, like sports bar. And so the sort of inspiration photo we were working off was this by Brad Rankin, where they have a very cool kid and he's got a ball that's burning. And I'm like, let's just do that. And they're like, cool, we'll burn a bunch of different sporty things. So wonderful inspiration photo to start from. But when uh, I looked at his blog post, they actually did burn a ball. And I'm like, I ain't burning no balls. (laughs) So they, they photoshopped a burned charred ball in there. So we weren't gonna do that. So I knew that I needed to figure out this lighting since the plan was to do a portrait shoot outside like a regular portrait shoot and then go to their basement and set up. I knew that I had to be quick because the kid would be tired after about an hour shoot. I knew I had to be fast. That's where the mannequin came in because I had to have all my light powers, all my distances, all that set up. And so let me show you the workflow pre-shoot and then I will show you how the shoot went. So for that backlight, the first thing I wanted to know, um, the first thing I wanted to do that was uh, based on the inspiration photo was make it warmer than the the front light. If you look at the inspiration photo, the front light is a lot cooler than the backlight. So that's one. It looks like they used a red gel, uh, but I didn't want to use a red gel just in case. So instead I used an orange CTO gel and that worked totally fine for my backlight. I got it all immediately. I knew how close I wanted it. And so that's what I shot first. And then the next problem was kind of working. I have like dust on my sensor there. Look at that. Okay, once I had the backlight, the next problem was to figure out what I'm doing with the four light. So here you can see I was experimenting with different lights. The first one is just a very open, non-gridded box. And then here I use a, a gridded box close up. So then we were trying, I was trying to figure out how to flag it off the background. Uh, even though I think I was gonna cut out the kid, I didn't want the background to be too lit up. And then I got this other mannequin head, which is very realistic, just to stand in. Okay, the next thing I figured out was that I wanted the backlight to be a little bit more fiery, a little bit more orange. So I think I put three CTO gels on there just to make it a little crackly fireness and then move back to the front light. So here you could see on the front light, I'm using a little bit more spotlightiness. And this is where, again, the importance of the mannequin I was finagling a look. If I go through these, I was basically (laughs) here's with the hair. I threw myself in there and I was trying to figure out a look on how to get this grid to look perfectly on the face. But I realized from doing these tests that using the rogue grid, I'd have to be a little too perfect and it would be, it would take too much time. And I knew that I would have a tired kid after the photo shoot. And here in this example, I realized that because of that little flash grid on my face, that (laughs) look at the mannequins like looking over my shoulder, like Uh, I I also realized the ball wasn't lit up and I wasn't gonna put another speed light on. So that's when I decided that I was gonna go with a typical softer look. And so I was here, I was practicing using fabric to sort of, uh, you know, flag out And then here I use some uh, atmosphere in a can. Here I misfocus, but I was trying to see if I was going to use real smoke or fake smoke. And again, tired kid, the smoke goes away. It's someone's basement. So I realized I wasn't gonna use my atmosphere in a can uh, down there so that I was gonna probably have to fake the smoke. Okay, there's the kid. We got to the kid's basement and he was a sport, Uh, but this was the first shot. And if you notice the light power was all set up The orange gel is already set up from my mannequin work. The ball is lit up, so there were no surprises if I was like, I'm gonna use a rogue grid. If I went to the basement and the kid's face was kinda like semi-lit up and the ball not lit up, we'd have to do a lot of post work too. So think about your shoot too. Think about your subject. You have to think about everything that goes into it. And uh, sometimes you want the to pinpoint with seven lights and sometimes you know you got a kid who uh, is hungry and you have to be a little bit quicker. I knew I was going to add fire. We weren't gonna light this ball up. And so I got a lot of my fire inspiration and how to do fire and smoke from this fire effect in Photoshop video. Okay, we went from that, bam, to that. That's hot, yo, that's hot. (laughs) 
All right, so we I used the burn defect on the ball. I used the fake fire, and I also used fake smoke uh, also in Photoshop. And I'll show you some of the other ones. Again, using the same lighting, we were able to make all his posters. Uh, here's his football one, and bam. We ended up with a football on fire. Uh, and now they can put logos on the top. They could put all kinds of wording over it. And I like how the orange light worked out. I like how the light will light up the face and also whatever we're looking at. Like we did some tennis ones here. Bam. <laughs> and the whole shoot took about, I'd say 20 minutes. Set up out of the way and lighting out of the way and gear out of the way, I was able just to get the kid, get him in there with the stuff, bam, 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 each of the different instruments and fire away. <laughs> uh, but this one is one of my favorites. This is gonna be really cool as a poster. Uh, his boxing gloves on fire, and he looks awesome. We sprayed his hair a little bit there. Uh, but fake smoke, fake fire, and we got a really cool look that is grungy and fun. And then we had to, man. The dog just kept bugging us and bugging us, and I had to. That's right, hot dog. <laughs> I'll stop. All right, there you have it, guys. How to get a head in your photography. Get a mannequin head. You can also scare people. What's in my bag? <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.